Catfishing. Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, YouTube. This is Damian Cryer. I am now at Shove Park. I, as promised, I am gonna put the boat in the water. And hopefully this morning, try to bring you guys some catfish this morning. Um, so wish me luck. Thank you. Okay, guys, I'm about set up and ready to go. I am to my fishing spot here at Shove Park. I finally docked the boat. I'm sorry, I finally anchored the boat down. Um, this is one of my favorite spots. So on this pole right here, I'm setting up for catfish. I hope you can see this good. This is the type of reel that I'm using today. This is a regular Walmart fishing reel. These are very effective. People say, well, how can you catch a big old catfish on that little small pole with thin line? There's a technique you have to use, which is, this is a drag. This right here is what they call a drag control system. Let me hold it over this way. This is a drag control system right here. Every fishing reel has this on it, whether you're using the open face or the Zepco. The open face, the drag control is right here in the front. This controls how many pounds of pressure that you allow the fish to have while you wind it in. So if the fish is really big and it's pulling really hard, if you have this set right, it won't break your line. It'll just keep, I'm sorry, loosen up a little bit more. It'll keep taking line, taking line, taking line until you tire the fish out. And every time he takes line, you can drag him in a little bit at a time. He'll take more and more and more and more. You drag him in a little bit at a time. So, since the water is not really windy today, I'm gonna to go ahead and set this up for catfish. And today, I'm gonna to be using this little split shot sinker right here. These are the ones I bought at Walmart yesterday. And I'm gonna be using a number five eagle claw hook and i have a small split shot sinker on there so i'm going to clamp this bigger split shot sinker above the small um split shot this is just help to hold it down on the bottom and i'm going to clamp it on there with the needle nose pliers like that and again all this does is it helps keeps the bait down low because catfish live on the bottom. Close this up. Now, the worms that I bought from Walmart. Again, I have the 18 Canadian worms. And the way I'm gonna set this up for catfish is I'm gonna use a whole one. When I'm fishing for panfish, I don't use a whole one. I use a small one. Right there, there's the hook, and there's the worm. You just take it, the fat part of the worm, and just hook it in there. Just like that. Just like that. Now, see how that moves around? So when it's in the water, that's what it's doing. The fish go nuts when they see this moving around and dangling like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cast it out. So again, there's the whole setup. There's the split shot sinkers right there here's the worm right here you want to make sure that it's having a lot of action remember action is what attracts fish so let's get this out there and let's see what happens okay so i threw it about 60 to 70 feet out in, out in front of me um so i'm going to lock it set the drag remember what i told you guys the drag has to be set. You don't know what you're gonna get when you're fishing on the bottom. You can get one this big, or you can get one as big as your arm. So you wanna have the drag set. So even if it is a big one, when you snatch it and set that hook, you don't risk breaking your line and the fish running off. So we're gonna go ahead and lock it. I got the drag set. We're gonna go ahead and set it down and see what happens from here. Okay, guys. <clears throat> I have two fishing reels out in the water now. Um, so hopefully we'll just wait and see what happens. And hopefully something starts happening soon. Um, I'm gonna go over something with you guys. A lot of people wanna know what's the best type of tackle to use when going fishing. You see a lot of people with um, big old tackle boxes, um, which there's nothing wrong with that. I like to have smaller tackle because 
you have more storage room. My line came loose. You have a little bit more room to store this stuff in. Like my boat has little small compartments. So I keep these little tackle boxes like this. Now, these are like three bucks at Walmart. And you see, I have a, I don't know if you guys can see that. I have a lot of stuff in there. I have sinkers, I have regular heavy weights. I have smaller split shots. I have smaller hooks for smaller fish, bigger fish, bi bigger hooks for bigger fish. You want to have a scale, just a little small scale, nothing fancy. So you can be able to weigh the fish, hook them out of the mouth right there and be able to weigh them. And on the side here, or it did, ah, oh, there it is. At the bottom, has a measuring tape right there. You can actually measure what you catch. So nothing fancy, just something small and convenient that you can use to carry with you. Again, carrying a lot of tackle was not really the best thing to do because then you limit yourself fishing because you're carrying so much bulky stuff. You have a lot of stuff on your boat that that's really unnecessary. You don't really need a lot. Um, you just need a little bit of stuff that you need to get where you're going. I keep a set of needle nose pliers on the boat because catfish are known for swallowing hooks. And any of you guys out there know anything about fishing, you know how expensive fishing tackle is. So you wanna always keep a set of needle nose pliers handy. Okay guys, so far I've been here for several minutes. I haven't had any bites yet. So far I got two poles out. I got number one, number two. You might notice that the background changed just slightly a little bit. I was right over there. I was in the sun, it got so hot over there, I had to take off my shirt. So I moved right across, just a few feet over to the shade. And um, again, so far I have two poles out on the bottom. Sometimes when you go fishing, they don't bite right away. You have times where they do bite right away. But most times when they bite right away like that, they're little small ones. They're on the feet and frenzy. So fishing is a patient sport. You have to be really patient to really get into this sport. But I'm gonna tell you something, look at the water. Yes, it's, it's not the prettiest water in the world. Of course, it's a reservoir, it's not a lake, but still just being out here is just so relaxing. You know, it gives you time to think, it gives you time to get away from everything, you know, and then load, but again, we are going to continue this catfish journey today. Um, see if I can bring you guys a couple of nice size fat catfish today. So um, again, I got two poles out. They are biting a little bit slower than I anticipated they would be. This is one of the really, really good hot spots here at Shove Park here in Fort Wayne. Um, so we'll just keep waiting and see what happens from there. Okay guys, we're starting to get a bite on pole number two over here. Something took it and tapped it a couple times. So hopefully it comes back and starts biting. Looks like pole number one is starting to get some hits on it too. So let's just see what happens here. Hopefully something takes it. And I know how catfish bite. Normally when they bite, they'll tap, tap, tap a couple times. And then when you least expect it, boom, they take it and run with it. And what I mean run with it, they grab the bait and run. And that's why the pole, see right here, here we go. When they run with it, that pole will bend over. Uh-oh, we're getting close. We're getting close, guys. This is where you have to stay focused and really watch. Like any other sports, there's a technique to it, whether it's basketball, whether it's football, whether it's baseball, whether you're race car driving, whether you're playing ho uh, uh, hockey, whether you're playing golf, there's a technique to every single sport. You have to make the right moves at precisely the right time. Okay, so he stopped biting. Hopefully he'll come back. Because I know he didn't get all the bait out off the off the hook. That was a worm about that long. So 
So hopefully he didn't take it and run with it. Okay, guys, we finally have something on the line. It's not that big. It's actually pretty small, but we have one so far. Thank you, finally. It's probably a small catfish. I think this one was out there pecking on my line earlier. He's trying to fight a little bit. There he is. Okay, guys, what we have here is a channel cat. It's a small baby channel cat. They call them channel cats because of the little bitty black spots on them. And this is a channel. <laughs> They're in the river. So when you grab a fish like this, you want to be careful. They have right here. That right there could hurt you. There's two on the side. On each, there's one on each side. They're called stingers. You wanna, there's a technique to how you take these off. You want to put your fingers up under both of the ones on the side and let the one at the top rest. Gently pull the hook out of his mouth. There you go. So that's the little catfish. So we're going to go ahead and release him because he is too small. And we're going to get back out there. See if we can get a bigger one. This is what I was telling you guys earlier. Sometimes you're going to get a bunch of small ones. But for every five or six small catfish that you hook into, you're going to eventually get a really, really big one. But remember what I said. Patience is the key. You have to be patient when it comes to fishing. Again, you never know what you're going to get. You never know what you're going to come across. The thing is, that's the most exciting thing about river fishing. You fish at a lake or fish at a pond, you obviously know what you're going to get. You're going to get a bluegill or you're going to get a bass. River fishing, you don't know if you're going to get a bluegill, a bass, a walleye, a pike, a gar, a perch, a sucker fish. You just never, never know. That's what makes it exciting, the unknown. You never know what you're going to catch when you're pulling that pole in. Now, I know what I'm fishing for. I'm fishing for catfish. Doesn't necessarily mean every time I get a fish on the line, it's going to be a catfish. It could be any, any number of species. Because rivers are full of different type of species. That's what makes it so interesting and exciting. Okay, guys, we just plugged into another fish. I don't think this one is big either. It's actually a very small one. This might be smaller than the other one. This looks like one of those days where, oh, wait a minute, it's a bluegill. It is a bluegill. Perfect example of what I was just talking about. You never know what you're gonna catch when you're river fishing. Look at this. Look how we hooked it, guys. We didn't even hook it by the mouth. We hooked it by the gill. <laughs> how crazy is that? We hooked the bluegill. <laughs> Get it? We hooked a bluegill by the gill. How do you hook a bluegill by the gill? I have no idea, but we did. But it's kind of cool though, because again, you never know what you're going to catch when you're river fishing. I'm fishing for catfish. I'm on the bottom and I get a bluegill. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Pretty little fish. Some people call them bluegills. Some people call them sunfish. So if you get these really nice size, they are really good fish to eat. They are really, really good. It's like one of the best fish to eat. So again, you want to be careful how you take this off the hook because you have fins running right along the spine. Hope you can see that good. See that? that those, those right there are fins. You can catch these in different colors, actually. Along this ridge right here, you can get them where they're blue or they're black. And right here where there's black ear, they have them where they're called blue ear. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, red ear bluegill. So this is a really good fish to catch if you get them at the right size. So again, you want to be careful how you take it off the hook because of these little fins right here will poke you. You just want to go like that, put your hands around it, and gently move the hook right out of its gill, releasing. Okay, guys, fishing pole number two has finally got a fish on. It doesn't feel that big either. It's actually a small one, but it doesn't really matter. We're fishing. We're catching fish. 
He trying to fight a little bit. Actually, it's a cat. Ah, did you see that? He just popped off the hook. Right at the boat, he popped off the hook, but he did not get all my bait off. Right as he got to the boat, I was gonna pull him in. He started flopping around real fast, and boom, just popped off. So we're gonna get back out there and try to get another one. Okay, guys, I have to get ready to wrap up this fishing video for Sunday's fishing video. Um, as you guys all know, my nine-year-old son, Darion, he's headed off to Camp Potawatomi today. So I have to get this boat back to the ramp, load it up, and get home so I can see my son off because I won't see him for a whole entire week. And I do not want my son to leave for camp without daddy being there to say goodbye and I love you. But I thank each and every last one of you guys for watching. The fishing wasn't really, really great today, but the point is we got out here today and we tried and that's what it's all about. Actually, we got something going on on this pole. Uh, I don't know if they know that I'm gonna leave or not, but all of a sudden it seems like both poles are starting to bite at the same time. But anyway, I wanna thank each and every last one of you guys who subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for all the love and support. In the near future, there's gonna be better videos. I know you guys want pranks, they're coming. This is just the beginning, but I wanted to bring you into my life to show you what I love to do. And this is what I love to do. But until next time, I'm Damian Cryer. Thank you guys for watching and have a blessed Sunday. Peace.